Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are going to do something a little different than the traditional videos that I've put out uh, over the last couple of years on electric vehicles. Uh, today we are going to look at the hybrid vehicles that Subaru has produced and I have two of them that have been donated from Subaru of America to our automotive technology program and I want to thank Subaru for that. We use these all the time. And the first one is, is right behind me here. That is a 2016 Subaru Crosstrek Hybrid. And it is a parallel hybrid. And this other one right here behind me is a 2019 Subaru Crosstrek Plug-In Hybrid. And so it has an electric only driving mode where you can drive so many miles and then it switches to a hybrid uh, operation. And what's interesting to me, or what was real interesting to me when we, we received uh, these vehicles, is the overall hybrid operation. Uh, the 2016 back here, uh, as I mentioned, is a parallel hybrid. And I'll make another video uh, about how that system works. Uh, today we're going to concentrate on this plug-in hybrid. And this hybrid vehicle was announced by Subaru as coming in May of 2018 as a 2019 model year vehicle. And an interesting thing in the press release from Subaru states that it, it, it's this new hybrid system and all kinds of stuff about it. But one thing that caught my eye was an all new transmission and the Toyota hybrid system. I thought, wow, a Toyota hybrid system in a Subaru. Uh, I have heard that Toyota owns a portion of uh, Subaru and so it makes sense that there would be this uh, cooperation uh, between them and so I wanted to see I want to see inside this transmission and so I looked and looked and looked and we we had this car donated to us a year ago and I looked on eBay I looked in salvage yards I couldn't find a transmission and so I did a saved search and finally got one off of eBay and was real excited uh, tore it apart or disassembled it, I should say. I don't tear things apart. And uh, I want to show you this transmission. It is really cool. This is a cool car. This is a all-wheel drive, mechanical all-wheel drive, uh, but it is driven through electric motors, um, unlike some other vehicles that have an electric-only rear axle. This has a physical uh, rear axle with a drive shaft going to it. So. Let's take a look at what is unique about this Toyota hybrid system transmission and explore it. So the first thing we're going to do is go look at just a regular Toyota hybrid transaxle and then we'll compare that to the Subaru version of it. So let's, let's go look at that. Okay, so the first thing for comparison's sake that I want to show you is an actual Toyota hybrid transaxle. This would be from a 2019 and above RAV4 hybrid from Toyota. It has a motor generator number two right here with 120 horsepower that when it rotates, the final drive gear rotates and the tires rotate and the vehicle moves down the road. It has a motor generator number one that starts the internal combustion engine and becomes a generator when the engine is running. It can also be used to vary to create a continuously variable transmission gear ratio between the engine crankshaft and the final drive. So in a real quick description, that's how the Toyota hybrid system transaxle works. And the Subaru system is identical, except it's in a longitudinally mounted rear wheel drive transmission case instead of a front wheel drive transaxle like this one. So let's go look at the parts and see uh, what we can see on this tra this new transaxle. Okay, the Subaru transmission uses the same motor generator number two that I just showed you from the RAV4 hybrid. It's the exact same diameter, same thickness, uh, same horsepower rating, same kilowatt rating. Uh, I believe it's the exact same rotor um, for motor generator number two. Here's the stator for motor generator number two and it looks just like the one in that RAV4 over there other than the three-phase cabling uh, attaches in a different location. And 
That's motor generator number two. Here's motor generator number one. Same thing, same diameters, same diameter, same thickness. Uh, I don't know what the power rating is on this one from uh, Subaru, but it appears to be the exact same one that's in that RAV4 uh, Toyota P710 transaxle. And then here is the MG1 motor generator number one stator assembly. So I'll get the stators out of the way because we won't be looking at those in any detail in this video. Instead, I'm going to build this transmission starting with motor generator number two and show you what it connects to and how it makes the vehicle move forward in electric vehicle mode. Remember this Subaru Crosstrek hybrid here is a plug-in hybrid. It has a 8.9, pretty close, kilowatt hour uh, lithium ion battery in the back, an air-cooled battery. It can drive on electric power uh, only. And then the internal combustion engine comes on. So let's look at the electric power only method of moving the vehicle down the road. And it only involves motor generator number two, as far as I can tell on this uh, particular model. So I'm going to bring in a few other uh, parts here. Um, the rotor itself has some splines that connect to a sun gear of a planetary gear set. And this planetary gear set is called the motor reduction gear set. And its job is to cause a gear reduction to take place, which multiplies the motor torque. So the motor torque on this rotor here is 202 Newton meters or 149 pound feet of torque. And if we run it through a gear reduction planetary gear set with a ring gear and a, and a planet uh, carrier, then we will get a 3.428 uh, gear reduction. So let me put all the pieces together here. Uh, for those of you who are curious, uh, this motor reduction planetary gear set has 42 teeth on the sun gear, 30 on the planet carriers, and 102 teeth on the ring gear, or internal gears, it's sometimes called. Okay, then we have an output gear. So here's an output gear. I'm going to put it right on the planet carrier. And now we've got the stack up for uh, making the vehicle move down the road. I'm going to bring in a couple of wooden V blocks here and put this thing, put this assembly in it. Okay, so we've got our motor generator number two. If the vehicle needs to move forward, the direction of rotation is this way and we will rotate it. We have a gear reduction unit with the ring gear bolted to the case of the transmission so it does not rotate and that causes a 3.428 to 1 gear reduction from motor generator number two to this gear over here that connects ultimately to our ring and pinion gear set and makes the vehicle move down the road. Okay, so the gear that it connects to is this gear right here and it just sits in here whoops wrong direction sits in here like this and so as the motor generator number two rotates this gear rotates also and it let me slide these out of the way for a moment connects to this pinion gear shaft so it's going to slide right on there like that and rotate and that give that connects to a 10 tooth pinion gear that then turns a 37 tooth ring gear in the final drive assembly of this transmission a rear wheel drive uh, all wheel drive transmission this is an all wheel drive uh, and that's different than the toyota version of this transmission, uh, the transaxle, because they didn't have an all-wheel drive, a mechanical all-wheel drive. 
Toyota had an electric all-wheel drive with three-phase cables going to the rear electric motor, but this is a mechanical all-wheel drive, um, which, is, which sacrifices a little bit in efficiency, but it also transfers torque directly through. And that can be an advantage, uh, especially if you're going uh, off-road, which this vehicle uh, is intended actually to do that. Okay, so just a quick review. Motor generator number two turns a planetary gear set for gear reduction, turns a drive gear that turns a driven gear that turns a pinion gear that turns our ring gear and as this ring gear turns our CV half shafts are connected to this and our tires which means our tires spin the exact same speed as this ring gear and differential case this is an open differential and the vehicle moves down the road and that's all we need for electric vehicle mode um, but this is a plug-in hybrid so that's all that's used in the electric vehicle mode operation but once the battery state of charge gets down low enough that we need to uh, kick kick in some additional power from the internal combustion engine then we need to start the engine we need to be able to keep the high voltage battery from going dead or from losing more state of charge not from going dead um, and then also to have the internal combustion engine help turn this same gear here to help turn the ring and pinion gear set to make the vehicle move down the road. So let me get these out of the way and let's bring in our other electric motor. All right, now we've got motor generator number one. Motor generator number one has a few jobs, has three jobs. Its first job is to start the internal combustion engine. Its second job is to, uh, as driven by the internal combustion engine, turn it into a generator and bring the high voltage battery state of charge up to a certain point. It's not going to charge it all the way in most cases. Uh, I can't remember on this car if it has a full charge option or not. I do not think it does. I've read about some cars that do, uh, but it can bring it up to a certain uh, level. And then this also works with another planetary gear set called the power split gear set to give us different gear ratios from the engine crankshaft to this drive gear back here to turn the ring and pinion gear set on our, and our tires. So let's bring in these other parts and, s and see what they are. Motor generator number one right here connects to a sun gear of a planetary gear set. The motor, or I'm sorry, the uh, power split device gear set. And then there is an input shaft from the internal combustion engine. There's a damper and, and torque limiter out there uh, where it connects directly to the engine crankshaft. But this is the planet carrier and it has our three planet gears uh, on it. Uh, by the way, the, the Sun Gear has 30 teeth, the Planet Carrier or Planet Gears have 25, and the Ring Gear has 78. And yes, I know that blows away a lot of you thinking that uh, that's not the right number of gear tooth count. It is. I've double checked it. <laughs> I know there's a formula to de decide how many teeth should be on the Ring Gear based on taking the Sun Gear teeth count and adding two times the uh, planet carrier or the planet gear uh, teeth count to get the ring gear count, but that isn't always the truth. And or I have one example here. This one does, this one does not work with that formula. So anyway, we have an input shaft from the internal combustion engine that's going to come in and the planet or the sun gear is going to go connect to the planet carrier. And then we have another ring gear right here for this planetary gear set and this ring gear has a splined output shaft where it connects to a drive gear right here 
All right, now let's bring in some V blocks and we'll hook this uh, stack up, up in the V blocks and take, take a look at how it works. All right, then we also have an input gear from the uh, engine, the internal combustion engine. Right there. Okay, so let's take a look look at what we have in this gear lineup. We have this gear right here that is actually driven by another gear that connects to the um, crankshaft of the engine through the, through the damper. So this gear has 35 teeth. This gear has 37. It's a 1.05 to 1 gear reduction from the engine to this input shaft. So as the engine is rotating, it turns this input shaft. That input shaft is connected right to the planet carrier of our power split planetary gear set. Now, let's just ignore that uh, gear that I just showed you for now. There are three things that I want to show you next. So first, starting the internal combustion engine. Uh, to start the internal combustion engine, all we have to do is turn the generator here, motor generator number one. We will turn it and notice as it rotates, it causes the, the gear that connects to the internal combustion engine crankshaft to rotate. And we can spin it really fast. That'll spin the engine crankshaft really fast and, and cause the engine to start. Now, once the engine is started, notice I can spin that input gear and it will cause a, the motor generator number one to spin 3.6 times faster than the input gear is spinning. So there's a 3.6 to one overdrive right there. As we're starting the engine, there's a 3.6 to one gear reduction to start the engine. So starter generator and the starter is a, a motor. So they call it motor generator number one. All right, so we've seen starting the engine and becoming a generator to recharge the high voltage battery up to a certain state of charge. All right, now, this gear over here on the end that we haven't done anything with, this is the output gear from the engine and the motor generator number one from the engine crankshaft. Notice if I hold it solid and spin the engine crankshaft uh, connected gear, it, it doesn't rotate. Uh, if I spin motor generator number one, it doesn't rotate. But if I spin them both together, it does rotate. And what happens is we can spin the engine crankshaft and the electric motor at the pretty much the same speed and get a direct drive, a one-to-one -one, uh, gear ratio through the, from the input to this output gear right here. We can also, if we, while spinning the engine crankshaft, if we spin the motor a little, or the rotor a little faster, we get gear reduction. The output gear doesn't turn quite as fast as the input gear. If we spin MG1 slower, then the input, notice we are getting a faster output over here. That's overdrive. If we bring it to a complete stop, we get an even higher overdrive. And if we turn it backwards, we get an even higher overdrive. So one more time, if we, as we spin the crankshaft of the engine, if we spin the motor, the rotor of motor generator number one faster than the crankshaft, we're in gear reduction over here. If we spin at the same speed, we're in a one-to-one -one gear, gear ratio. And if we spin it slower, then we get overdrive. If we stop it, we get another overdrive. If we spin it backwards, depending on the speed, we get a continuously variable gear ratio. So this is called a CVT, continuously variable trans transmission. But CVTs have a bad name. And this is not one of those that has a bad name. This is a, uh, it's referred to in a lot of publications as an electronic CVT. The CVTs that have had 
problems and have a, a bad rap are the uh, ones that use a push belt, uh, like the one in this photo, and, or uh, ones that use a pull chain, uh, like the ones in that one in this photo. Uh, the pull chain ones are more reliable than the push belt ones, but there's two. There's actually three different types of CVTs uh, that I have here in the shop. The push belt, the pull chain, and the electronic continuously variable CVT. All right, now let's take this variable gear ratio uh, motor generator number one and engine crankshaft, and we're going to take this gear and we're going to connect it to the output gear from motor generator number uh, two over here. So notice on motor generator number two, let me scoot this over a little bit here. The output gear over here has two gears. This smaller gear is what this gear from motor generator number one is going to connect to. So if I, let me scoot these stators out of the way. If I bring in our Motor generator number one. Get it lined up. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the entire lineup as it is inside the transmission housing. We have our motor generator number two, its gear reduction unit, and the output gear that drives the ring and pinion gear set. Uh, that's the electric only mode that we've talked about. Then we've got our continuously variable transmission through our power split device, we have a gear that drives a smaller gear here, but these two are connected together on the same output shaft. So what I'm saying is if this gear rotates, so does this other gear, and so does the ring and pinion gear set and your tires. The large gear has 41 teeth, the small gear has 32 teeth, and it gives us a gear overdrive of 0 0.781 uh, to one. So as we're driving down the road, and our high voltage battery state of charge gets low, our, our engine is off. So I'll hold this gear from rotating. Motor generator number two is propelling the vehicle. And notice we've got our output gear driving. Notice our MG1 is spinning, but it, it's usually not generating power uh, at that point because it would be um, using power to generate power, which is a loss. We would have electrical power. We'd have to spin it with the internal combustion engine. Okay, um, so then once the state battery state of charge gets low enough, then we start the internal combustion engine. So we spin motor generator number one faster than the engine crankshaft and get the in internal combustion engine to start. Once the internal combustion engine starts, then we can start playing with the variable gear ratios. So if we spin everything, the, the engine, the internal combustion engine, input gear, and motor generator number one, the same speed, notice that causes, whoops, I'm spinning in the wrong direction, that causes the output gear to turn and it causes our output drive gear for the ring and pinion gear set to turn also and that would transfer uh, engine torque through our, p our power split device gear set into the um, output gear. Notice that's also causing motor generator two to rotate. And motor generator two, as it's rotating, can be a generator to s s uh, generate more power to recharge the high voltage battery to a certain uh, state of charge. If the high voltage battery uh, has enough power, then this can act in parallel with the internal combustion engine and the power split device, and give us a parallel mode where it um, helps the engine crankshaft go down or propel the vehicle down the road. Uh, we can also have the a series mode where the internal combustion engine is spinning fast and this jet, this motor generator number one becomes a generator to provide power to motor generator number two to move the vehicle down the road. Now, I did not see on the, the uh, description for the Subaru, 
if motor generator number one ever combined with motor generator number two to move the vehicle down the road. I don't think it does. Uh, the original Toyota Prius Prime here in the United States that started in 2017 had a special one-way uh, sprag type clutch on the flywheel to keep the engine from spinning backwards if we use both motors, both electric motors, rotors to um, propel the vehicle down the road. The engine crankshaft would, uh, could spin backwards. But in this case, from what I've read and for the RAV4 also, uh, it doesn't do that. Uh, but I could be wrong, but I couldn't find anything talking about a one-way flywheel uh, device. This output gear that we've talked about uh, that drives our ring and pinion gear set, that is for the front tires. So this is front-wheel drive uh, operation only. But I told you, this, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Subarus are famous for uh, having an all-wheel drive. So now we've got to look at what additional part is added to all of this to give us all-wheel drive. So here on the motor generator number two and the, f and the gear reduction and, and output gear to drive the front uh, ring and pinion gear set, this gear, if we look inside of it, let me pull it off. Down inside of this gear, it has splines for another shaft to come in and connect to. So this is the rear output shaft um, inside the transmission that goes to a special electromagnetic activated clutch pack that then can send torque or apply torque to the rear axle. So this vehicle is normally front wheel drive, but we can apply uh, torque to the rear axle as needed to give us all wheel drive. So let's take a look at that all wheel drive clutch pack. Okay, the all wheel drive clutch pack sits in this clutch drum right here that has two wires coming off of it. And if we look at the back right here, it's got this electromagnetic clutch. It's just a big coil of wire, like an air conditioning clutch, compressor clutch, air conditioning compressor clutch. Uh, I have put power and ground to this uh, real quickly, and it, this became a magnet, a very strong magnet. Uh, on the scan tool, as you can see in this photo here, the scan tool, the, the Subaru scan tool, will let you apply up to 3,000 milliamps of current to this clutch coil and test it. And so uh, the resistance of this clutch coil, uh, when I measured it yesterday, was around 3.5 ohms. Uh, so if we connect that to 12 volts, we'll, we'll get somewhere in the 3,000 to 4,000 milliamp or 3 to 4 amp uh, range of, of current. Now, uh, this clutch drum that, that spins freely here has this input shaft that I showed you, or the output shaft that I showed you going through it. And since this is an electromagnet, what the electromagnet is going to do is it's going to attract this steel plate right here and pull this plate down against that magnetic surface down inside there. As it pulls it down, it will apply force to a two-fiber disc clutch pack that's in there. So we have down in the bottom of this clutch housing, two plates that connect, that have splines that connect to the outer housing, two plates that have internal teeth that connect to an inner housing. And then we have this big steel plate right here that sits on top of all of that. And as the magnetic field is present, it pulls down really hard on that, and it stops those clutch plates that could slip. It prevents them from, or tries to prevent them from slipping. Now, as it tries to prevent them from slipping, there's an interesting little piece in the middle of all of that, 
right here, this little hub with these balls on it. This is called a ball ramp. And if these balls are forced to move one way or the other, they roll up a ramp and try to separate pieces. And so this metal plate sits on top of this ball ramp assembly and it has little ramps down in it also and so it, it's going to set right there just like that and then notice as I rotate it it separates so not separated separated back and forth as it as the bottom piece tries to spin it pushes up on the top piece pushes up so what causes the bottom piece to start spinning is the electromagnetic clutch that we just looked at so electromagnetic clutch comes on it grabs this splined piece underneath starts it rotating as it rotates it pushes up on this clutch apply plate and this clutch apply plate has a seven clutch fiber disc clutch pack that as it pushes up it will try to compress but we can't compress so it squeezes and puts force on those clutches and stops them from rotating and that causes this shaft that's already connected to the the drive gear on our mg2 uh, output here to transfer torque through the housing itself to a big plate that sits on top here and the output shaft that goes to the rear drive shaft and the rear axle uh, to make the vehicle move down the road. So during non all wheel drive operation, this shaft can spin, these clutch plates can spin without being held solid to the output shaft that from the drive gear that provides the torque that goes to the rear axle. So in other words, these two, these two shafts are not connected together. When the electromagnetic clutch comes on, the ball ramp is activated, it pushes up on these fiber clutches, squishes the big clutches, clutch plates together, and connects this output shaft to the input shaft and gives you uh, torque to the rear axle. Now these are all spinning pretty much the same speed anyway. We just need to apply the clutch discs to transfer the torque. All right, I'm going to uh, hurry and put this back together and then I'll show you where it goes in the, uh, in the whole lineup uh, with the transmission. Okay, I've got the clutch pack reassembled. We've got our input shaft right here from our drive gear, and we've got our output shaft right back here that goes to the rear drive shaft. So that's all together like that. Now, if we bring in our MG2 right here, this input shaft right here is going to go right up the middle of motor generator 2 through our planetary gear reduction gear set, the motor speed reduction gear set. I've got a few uh, shims in there that will be used in the case. And then that connects right to the drive gear, the same drive gear that turns the ring and pinion gear set for the front. So we're driving the output shaft through the clutch pack to the final output shaft here that drives the rear drive shaft and the rear axle. So as we put this whole thing together now for one final look, here we go. <laughs> That's quite a big long stack up. And as you'll see here, uh, and as you'll see here in a minute, we're going to put this inside of the transmission case 
uh, we've uh, my shop assistant and I have uh, spent a lot of time preparing this uh, case. We've cut away sections of it so you can see all of this as we put this back together. Oh, uh, sorry, there's one more thing I want to show you, uh, and that is the, the oil pump assembly here. It has two gears on it. Some of you may have been wondering why are there two gears on the outside of the planet carrier and the ring gear. And that's because we have two oil pump drive gears here. One of the pump drive gears uh, is used for electric motor only driving. The other one is used when the uh, internal combustion engine is driving. And they actually have a little sprag on there so that when the one is being used, the other one can just free spin instead of uh, having, to, having to turn um, at variable speeds as that power split device, uh, the speeds between the ring gear and the planet carrier vary all the time because of it being a continuously variable gear set. So there's our oil pump. It just drives a uh, trochoid oil pump, just like in all the other uh, Toyota hybrid system transmissions. All right, let's put all this in the cutaway transmission, and then we'll come back and take a look at that. Okay, it took a little while, but we put together the Subaru TH2A plug-in hybrid transax or transmission. It's a rear-wheel drive transmission. We have a front differential right here where the front CV shafts half shafts come out and go to your front tires and then we have a rear drive shaft that comes in right here that goes to the rear axle for the all-wheel drive system. It's a pretty long transmission. Uh, we've got motor generator number one up in the front here. We have a bunch of gears in the middle. Motor generator number two right here and then our all-wheel dri all drive electromagnetic coupling in the rear. We have three-phase cables right here that come in to feed motor generator number two. And then we would have cables like that on the other side to feed motor generator one, but me and my shop uh, student assistant, Nash, uh, made a cutaway uh, of this transmission for you to see. Did a really good job, and I want to show you uh, this transmission. Okay, so these are all the exact same parts that I had here in the wooden V-blocks earlier in the video, but here is our input shaft from the engine crankshaft. We've got a, a damper that connects right there and you'll notice that when it rotates it turns the input shaft and that turns the planet carrier in our power split device which turns the sun gear which is connected to our motor generator number one. So that becomes a generator once the engine starts. To start the engine we just turn motor generator number one and notice it makes the engine crankshaft turn right here. Okay, then on the rear over here we've got motor generator number two and oh right here you can actually see the ring gear with the teeth facing away from you and the front differential, the open uh, differential that our half shafts come out. Uh, this would go to the left front tire. Um, so when we rotate in the forward direction to make the vehicle move forward. Motor generator number two, notice the ring gear spins forward. The ring gear and your tires turn the same speed and direction. Okay, so here's our motor generator number two, our gear reduction gear set that we already talked about. Here's our parking gear, so when we put it in park it stops all of the output drive gear from rotating prevents the vehicle from rotating. Um, and then we've got our variable gear ratios that come in here that drive this gear that connects to our output gears to the, to the front. It also connects to this output gear and a big long shaft that comes and goes to our rear or our all-wheel drive uh, electronic torque electronic control coupling uh, right here and remember this is an electromagnetic coupling so when it is activated torque is transferred out the rear the rear of the transmission so that pretty much wraps up the uh, Toyota hybrid system 
integrated into the Subaru Crosstrek plug-in hybrid, which I'm actually pretty impressed with the vehicle. It does have a fairly short uh, electric driving range of 17 miles. Uh, but if that matches your commute uh, or a round trip commute, then that's, that's fine. Uh, plug-in hybrids can be a, a good transitional vehicle for people that aren't quite ready for an electric vehicle. You can plug-in hybrids are a, are a good option. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of plug-in hybrids available uh, out there uh, in different configurations. So that's it. Thank you for watching.